Nigeria is a land of great opportunities. Many times, these opportunities are disguised as problems. High maternal mortality, poor access to health facilities, and a number of out-of-school kids. Unemployment, poverty, and gender inequality. Youth are seizing this opportunity and leading initiatives to bring positive, lasting change to problems around them creatively. Leap Africa with its partners are nurturing this youth and equipping them with the knowledge and skills to scale up social innovation in Nigeria. Through the Social Innovators Program, a 12-month fellowship, Leap provides mentorship training and tools to young Nigerian change agents ardent about addressing challenges in their communities. Meet the 2014-2015 SIP Fellows. The gap between educators and ICT inhibits learning in the classroom. Adeniyi uses his platform to render ICT services to schools and organizations through various projects. So, Access Drive basically um, is to help underserved individuals, community, and uh, public schools have access to technology tools for empowerment. And uh, the idea was started as a result of my personal experience uh, growing up in a rural area where we lack access to technology tools. Um, I was 16 years the first time I saw a desktop computer. Um, my friends laughed at me because I was unable to use uh, the desktop, you know, um, and that was perhaps the, the most embarrassing moment for me. And um, it was at the same time a turning point because I went to enroll myself, you know, in a workshop where I acquired the skill. You know, I deploy my passion, my energy, my time to learn. You know, four months down the line, I, I, I became better than those people that challenged me. I, I even became their tutor. So, so the, the basically, yeah, that was how the, the whole thing started out. Uh, MDG, Millennium Development Group. So I was meant to, I was asked to resuscitate those centers. You know, those centers were abandoned. You know, so one of the centers in Gombe, all right, um, the process of resuscitating in the process of, of bringing it to, to life. I, I saw a 31 year old guy, his name is O'Shea. Um, he saw a desktop and he couldn't put a name to it. He was asking me, what, what is this? And I told him, it's a desktop computer. And the guy was supposed to write his jump that he will have to use computer to write. And at that point, he he could not recognize the tool that we used to write like the, the exam. So what I now did was that we went through our training. Then we also created um, a CBT software, a tutorial software for those that are going to be writing Jump. You know, so he used that also to practice. You know, and he, he had a fantastic result at the end of the day. In three years, my vision is to uh, be able to have uh, 50 centers you know, created by Access Drive, then train 5,000 students, you know, across Nigeria that will be globally relevant and employable. Basically, um, I had a, a wonderful experience, you know, in, in the course of the residential workshop. Um, you know, one, critic, one, one uh, thing I'm really thankful to God for um, was the kind of network I got at, as a result of the of the training, you know, um, opportunity that I could not have gotten on my own. You know, I was able to connect with the right set of uh, social innovators, you know, that have given me that opportunity. And uh, also um, the training helped me to be able to put structure to my project, you know, uh, helped me to properly structure my project. Uh, before then, my project was not really properly structured. It's, what uh, it has really helped me to properly structure it and even scale up in a way, you know. Bashiru Adamu. Prisoners are condemned to live in their past beyond the prison walls. However, Bashiru has helped convicts in Utupo prison to learn essential skills that will get them integrated into society. Today, it's 
Otuwa Prison, Benue State, Nigeria. This is where we have been doing our projects for the past three years. And you know what? Our initiative, Dream Again Prison and Youth Foundation, the vision is to transform prisons in Nigeria from an institute of punishment to an academy of positive change. Taiwo Adiremi, struck by the death of his sister during childbirth, Taiwo was desperate to end maternal deaths by educating women and causes and preventative measures on maternal mortality. Adekumbi Adeoye Adekumbi workplace bridges skill gap and encourages diversification by providing internship opportunities and training for undergraduates and new graduates in Nigeria. Shishawa in Nigeria's local language means, is there a job? She Shewa. organization provides internship opportunities for young people across Nigeria. I started Shishawa as an undergraduate of Obafemi Aolo University. Um, I started Shishawa sometime in 2009. Um, prior to that time, I was searching for an internship opportunity. I was, I'd written to several organizations, different companies, asking them that I wanted an holiday job. Now, most of them weren't really open to receiving me, even though I asked not to be paid. I realized that most of them didn't understand what it was I was looking for. And even in the course of that period, I understood that what I was searching for was actually called an internship because internships were not words that were you know, readily used by organizations or even students within the system. It was either you were in IT or, or something like that or you were probably sent to someone's um, shop for apprenticeships. That's what it was about. Um, so the word internship wasn't so new to me. In searching, that, searching for that opportunity, I realized how difficult it was for anybody of, um, who was in the same you know, state as I was. I wasn't looking for school credit. I just wanted an opportunity to develop myself. Um, when I didn't find that opportunity, I started to do a bit of research into um, organizations in developed countries that focus on internships and I realized that Nigeria was really lacking in terms of internship placement as well as um, internship structures, especially internship organizations. Um, so that's how Shishewa was born. Shishewa. One of, our, of my greatest um, inspiring stories was recently um, when I got a call for internship placement. A company wanted us to come in to supply them interns. And um, I got to the organization and found one of our interns as the CEO of the organization. He had already started his own business and was now asking for our service. I think that, was, that, that exemplifies what exactly our organization is all about and what exactly we want to do. We want to put people you know, at a more advantaged position, at a better position to understand what work is all about, what entrepreneurship is all about. So another thing that the Social Innovators Program has been for me is about the network. A lot of people are doing so amazing things. Sometimes you're, you, you get more excited about what you're doing. You understand that the challenges you're facing is not just you know, tailor me to you. You understand that too many people are also facing it. And most importantly, about the future of Nigeria, through the eyes of social innovators, you, you, you know that it's such a great journey and it's not the same place that Nigeria has been. You know that the future has a lot of beautiful stories in it. Joseph Adole. Nigeria is yet to generate enough electricity to cater for the needs of a teeming population. Joseph has helped to reduce the burden of inadequate power supply with solar energy. The goal of um, tackling unemployment among youths through innovative agricultural practice, value reorientation, skill acquisition, entrepreneurship that will take to be in existence without electricity. So, as I 2008, I was trained in Kaduna on repair and maintenance of general electricity. And I was not even a science student. So I came to realize that if the mindset and the willpower is reset, Nigeria youths can harness the sun, wind, land, and water. They will become an alternative uh, source of national uh, and natural resources. Kelvin Ogoli. 
Malnutrition is one of the most threatening issues in our society. Kelvin is combating high production costs of livestock feeds and tackling protein and malnutrition in children and pregnant women. The court is the duty of every generation is to make our shadows available so that this generation has can better see tomorrow to make it better than today. And as a total entrepreneur, that is one thing I've always seen myself in this, trying to make my shoulders available today for tomorrow's generation to make tomorrow better than today. Elvin Austin. The importance of good and effective communication propelled Elvin to improve spelling accuracies through an online platform that integrates SMS and mobile application in education. A conjum NM. NM is boosting education for adolescents in low income communities. The change I'm working towards can be summarized as follows helping to achieve appreciable increase in the enrollment of children in schools to ensure that public primary and secondary schools, especially in rural communities, have very conducive learning environments. To ultimately help in grooming vibrant Nigerian youths with independent mindset and the will to effect positive changes wherever they are. Joshua Iheji Amazu. With a depressing poor doctor-patient statistics in rural settlements in African countries and preventable disease, Joshua found an innovative way to use mobile technology to nip the spread and provide personalized healthcare information. Doinsola Ogunye. Doinsola encourages children to be physically and mentally involved in the fight against environmental degradation in Nigeria. What inspired it was basically my love for Nigeria. When I was 22, I decided to do something that would change Nigeria from the, using the children as my focal point. And what we're trying to change is how people look at Nigeria, focusing on the environmental sector. And um, we started this in 2009 using children and we started a club called Kids Clean Club. Now Kids Clean Club is to teach children physical cleanliness, mental cleanliness and environmental cleanliness for the love of Nigeria. We're trying to teach children about recycling. We're teaching children about tree planting. We're teaching children about managing their waste, materials around us to create art and things like that, so that when they grow up, they know that these things actually can be reused and recycled. And right now, we are actually teaching about 500 children how to recycle. About 300 children have planted trees, and one child has actually started a kid's garden in Aja. His name is Kudus and it's been amazing because right now he has inspired other children to start gardening and this is actually taking children off the streets. So instead of the children playing on the streets, they are actually playing in Kudus's garden right now and he has actually been inspired to do more gardens. So right now we're working on having Kudus have 10 more gardens before the end of next year and we hope it's going to be a ripple effect in every other um, area that we go to. Next year, we're moving to every state in Nigeria and we're starting something called Plant for Peace. This year, we're actually planting 50,000 trees in Lagos State. We're planting these trees to let people know that if you plant a tree, you are not only saving yourself, you're saving the next generation. And we're telling children that if two people have a fight, for instance, and we say, let us settle, let us settle amicably, but instead of just settling, let's plant a tree together. It, bring, it brings unity amongst people. It brings peace amongst nations. We're telling children, most especially, so that when they grow, they would have something to fall back on. Not just the peace aspect, but the environmental aspect as well. Then over the next three years, after next year, we're going throughout the whole of West Africa. and We're teaching children to recycle, to plant trees, and to love each other, to love their country. And then the last year, we're going to go international. It's been amazing. It's been something that I would want to do all over again. If I had the opportunity, I've been able to meet new people. I've been able to change my mindset towards some other th some other things in my life, I, apart from just you know the charity work I'm doing. I've been able to have a global mindset about what I'm doing, and it's given me a platform to put my work on a pedestal that would move me forward in life. Chukweka is passionate about the environment 
and he took up the gauntlet to develop clean and environmental friendly renewable energy solutions using local material. Back to Lagos one time, uh, going through Todd Mayland Bridge, and then I see this avalanche of sawdust. And sawdust, for instance, is one of the things you could use to create briquettes. And, and I felt, wow, okay, this guy is just trying this and now it's like a waste. There has to be a way we could utilize this, yeah. And that sort of, you know, sparked that drive. So, generally, I'm always very enthusiastic to use technology and innovation to solve some problems. And this was a unique set and I, I felt drawn towards it. It was like seeing something and being drawn to it, you know, so it just came natural. So one of the key things I would say I learned was being able to think holistically, a systems-based thinking to solving problems, where you actually analyze all the different components that affect whatever problem you're trying to solve. So that was very key because in fact, it was something that helped us create strategy with what we're doing currently. And I, I learned that from there. Uh, even if there, there's so much, we learn things about time management, we learn things about uh, telling the story, strategy, and all of that. But one of the things I'll say I really gained from a program was the opportunity to meet with other fellows. I mean, you have about 20, 19 or 20 something fellows across the country that are doing amazing things. Raquel Jacobs. With many children of school age out of school, the future of Nigeria is in the balance. And Raquel is empowering Africa's generation beyond the classrooms and after school mentoring to maximize their talents. For me, beyond class started when I was coming to school one morning. So I saw a boy. I was in University of Lagos then in 200 level, first semester. And I was going to school right on, on the street. I saw a boy going to school with torn uniforms. And he had tattered socks. And his, his socks, his shoes were torn the other way. And for the first time, I, I just thought to myself, um, why is this boy going to school? Unhurried. He was just on his own. And he wasn't. I was in a hurry, but he wasn't. I just thought to follow him and see where he was going to. And funny enough, he was going to the school next to the, uh, my, my university. And so I went with him and I noticed that there were a bunch of kids that, were, um, that came to school late. And the teacher was flogging them for coming to school without socks. So I intervened and I talked to so I said, you know what, you should let them go. I don't think it's their fault that they have no socks. And the man said, no, that if he doesn't beat them, their parents won't give them socks the next day. And so I asked him, how long have you been doing this and has it changed? And he said, well, he will keep beating them until one day they crash their friend and their friends give them socks. That he feels that it's important for children to come to school with socks. I said, I understand too. So we negotiated somehow and I agreed that I was going to bring socks for the children. And then he now said, all the children. And I said, yes. I said, by the way, how many children do you have in this square? He said, 1,000. And the truth about the whole story was that that day I was going to school. I, I was trekking from my house to school. I had no money at all. So I was thinking to myself, how would I promise a man to bring socks for 1,000 children when I had no money, when I was working to school, and, and then I, had, I gave my word and I had to fulfill it. So I left the school discouraged, but then I knew that if I gave my word, I had to do it. The Monday after, I showed up in the school with socks for 1,000 children. It's a long story, but that started the journey. So that day, I noticed when the children started screaming and shouting, they were excited. They were screaming, God bless you, auntie, whatever. You know, you get a good husband. You know how children are in public primary school. And it was exciting. And I just kept looking, wondering, why are they excited about just socks, you know? And I started to look at the building. I started to look at the children. One of our volunteers then just said, I think there are worse schools than this in Bariga. And then he just clicked. Can we just visit them and see what you're doing and how we can also help out with socks? So from giving out free socks, we moved to buying exercise books, to school bags, and then we notice that the children even need beyond just school supplies to mentoring. Some of them have, they have no idea what they want to be in life or why they're even in school. And so we decided that we want to go step further to give them more than we're giving them right now. And that was how the journey started. So our, our aim five years from now is to use volunteers to teach children and eventually train their teachers to do better in classroom. Inspire them and when you walk into a public primary school, you should, not, you should not be taking, tell the difference between a public primary school and a private primary school because there is a change in the system. And we notice also that it's not just about the children. You know, even their parents, where they're coming from affects the children. So we want to be able to create like a system where the parents, the teachers and the children come together and discuss what's happening in school. It was exciting because 
I met a lot of young people, even from Kano, from different places. I'm like, oh my God. So this thing's not just happening in Lagos. It's not like there are people who are just doing this in Lagos. There are people outside of Lagos doing exciting work. You know, able to build a connect with them, for me, was even exciting. If, if I hadn't been a part of the program, probably I've not met some of them. But then being a part of the SAT program helped me to connect with them where um, the training was impactful, it was timely. Um, I remember at that time, during the training was when I was, we were trying to design our Afri Aspire program. And I asked a lot of questions because I was trying to build the program. And the SAT program was just a point because I just had to replicate what the SAT program was about and then make it in a way that it would affect public primary education. Chikozie Unabife. Chikozie's firm produces healthcare devices in Nigeria, and this has helped to reduce cost of healthcare in state hospitals. I can recall in 2013, August to be precise, I was working, I went to work voluntarily at a private clinic in Lagos. Uh, there I witnessed, I worked in the theater, the operating room, and I witnessed minor surgical operations. And on this fateful day, um, there was this woman that came in, she was heavy, she was pregnant, and um, CS was to be done on her, the so general section was to be done. So we took her into the um, operating room and started walking. Um, there was light, obviously, and we started walking. So we caught her open, and I was just assisting and observing the procedure. And all of a sudden, Nepa took the light, let me use that word, and there was chaos in the, in the operating room, and um, the assistant they went to bring Nokia touchlights on board their phones just to, um, to be able to illuminate and continue their work. And at, at, at that spot, I didn't notice anything. I was just like, okay, this is Nigeria and it's normal. So I was just like, okay, it happened. But, but, but after that day, I went back home and everything changed because I, I sat down uh, in my, my sitting room and I was like, okay, what happened? So they took the light and this happened, this happened. So I was, I was really bad. I felt bad. I felt angry and I was inspired to, okay, why don't we have a product that will just be placed um, you know, at the surgeon's forehead and he can walk, he can walk and uh, you know, do his job hands-free so and they will not be curious of bringing a, you know, a, touch phone, a touch light or um, a reading lamp or something and you continue your work till Nepal brings the light. So that was how it started. I called my, my younger brother. So we just looked at it and we just said, let's do this, let's do this, let's just do it. So we started doing it and we just we did the product and the people commended the product, like, ah, this is really nice. So that was how it started, actually, and the rest is history, actually. Now, we, we have um, four products, four prototypes. And, um, and these products were used, uh, one was used, we used one uh, in health center in um, OUTH, in OUTH and in um, um, uh, school here in Ife. And then um, in Lagos, too. We used one, Femi hospitals to be precise, and some other hospitals. And in, in the number, I would say um, about four surgeries have been done using the headlamp. Apart from the, the, the fellows I met, the different, idea, different ideas, I was like, wow. So people think like me, I have people that are like me in Nigeria. So that, that was very, very inspiring for me at first. Now, second, what I got from actually the, the APA, the APA um, uh, workshop was collaboration. Now, just it kept sinking and ringing in my head that collaboration because I, I, after the, the workshop, I went, I went back home and I sat down. And I was like, okay, this project is, is very ma is massive. It's, it's a massive project, project and I'll need help. I can't do it alone. So I said, okay, who can I collaborate with? How can I make this product sustainable? How can I you know, make it you know, do it better? So you know, I started looking for you know, companies to, to collaborate with. So I met this company. We have the following Cloud Short INC. So, you know, I talked to them, we, we agreed and we collaborated. And since that time till now, it has been easier because we, we put heads together and we are doing it. Initially, my teammates were just people from the health sciences. I didn't have much engineers working with me. But after the fellowship and, you know, I had about collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. So I decided to, you know, bring in engineers that will you know, really work with me so and it has been awesome and now we already have our, our, our final product Anthony Oniwa Anthony is responding swiftly to the performance of the students taking entrance exam through ICT I yeah, came up with this initiative called exam Mate, which is aimed at changing the way students prepare for the exam work and make examinations by making learning fun through interactive learning 
So this was inspired out of a genuine desire to see students excel in their examinations and uh, ultimately significantly improve the educational sector. The main issue we have with education is access to good teachers. So examining makes it possible for candidates with poor education, whether within urban or rural areas, to have access to portable learning content. Adiola Ogunkolade. Adiola dreams of a world where women and girls are inspired and empowered through fashion to creatively reach their potentials. I started Deck in 2013 because um, from two standpoints. First, because I love empowering women and helping young girls to grow and do better in life. And secondly, because of my not so good experience with um, the local fashion designer in Nigeria, I had two, two very not so good experiences. First was when I was trying to be a dressmaker and um, the types of leaders that I was um, attached to showed me um, a lot of negative attitudes like um, disappointing their clients, not delivering um, good quality products and um, we're just not having good leadership skills. And uh, secondly, because a tailor made me cry on my wedding day. That's because they, um, they made a mess of my wedding gown and so I couldn't wear my desired wedding dress on my special day. So at Avdek, it gives us great pleasure to see most of our women that we have gone, most of our beneficiaries that have gone through our trainings or our exposures do um, wonderfully well in their businesses. Especially, we have seen someone like Christy Wakawa from Meduguri that actually was in the midst of all the insurgency and all of that. She was able to, you know, go through one of our programs and um, she had never. She had never um, done business professionally. She just had the skills. But right now, Christy Wakawa will be in Malta and Amsterdam this year, and she'll be showcasing our products for the first time. We've been able to um, train, package, and remodel them, especially by um, attaching them to mentors that are doing excellently well in the sector. When I left from the Leap Africa training, I realized that, or I learned that, um, Alone, you can do so little, but together, or working in collaboration or partnership with other people that are doing similar things with you, you can achieve so much more. And um, I have worked since during my fellowship year. I have worked with over 20 organisations, and we have recorded tremendous impact, especially in our turnover, in the number of beneficiaries, in the number of impact, and in saving costs. It is amazing. Olusheun Ojo. Olusheun understands the need for access to quality health information. Thus, provides supports to combat endemic and harmful cultural practices. Isaac Omoyeli. Isaac is committed to transforming lives and is reducing the number of children who are out of school by adopting children to school and facilitating access to psychological support. The initiative was was inspired based on my personal experience knowing how it feels like as a child not to have basic school supplies how it feels like as a child not being in school when his peers are in school how it feels like as a child to be in school with empty stomach before now most of the children in the community they find it difficult in communicating certain words they don't cope well in school they have child challenges educationally but with our supplemental class we have been able to help these children being a being a fellow with leap leap africa social innovations um, program has um, really um increased my um, capacity it has actually taken this project to another level in um, different ways the first one um, we were actually taught um systems and thinking and um, this actually made made me to realize that um aside um giving aid to the kids, we can now give aid to, um, to our um, parents too. We were, we were able to run um, a, a um, su support scheme for um, the um, women in the um, community to uh, support their work, to empower them. Most of them, we were able to, um, uh, uh, to um, train them in, in various skill acquisitions and also we also supported them with, with uh, materials to aid their work. Olufemi Amotayo. 
Olufemi leverages on the new media to empower startups to grow. He provides business resources through online platforms and workshops. My inspiration came from um, 2012 when I attended job fair. I saw thousands of unemployed graduates uh, just for few available jobs. Um, so right there at the moment, I, I, I felt that many of these guys can actually start small businesses uh, with what they, what they have. Gather a lot of entrepreneurship resources, uh, materials that can help ent young entrepreneurs, especially startup founders. Um, so we publish a magazine every month called Entrepreneurs. Uh, we also have a, an online version of the, of the magazine. Um, so we publish, we send a lot of resources out there for people to apply for opportunities. Uh, that's what we do. And then we also do uh, meetups for startups. We call it the Young Startup Network. So it's a network for startup founders uh, to meet and share ideas and solutions. One that I can easily talk about um, is uh, that of Folari. Uh, he's actually uh, an undergraduate. Uh, uh, at the University, I mean Yaba College of Technology. Um, so it follows the, the blog passionately, reads all the information and gets all the resources. He applies for some of them and he gets, uh, sometimes he gets lucky, he gets selected. But what has happened is that uh, he has been able, to, even as a student, he has been able to build a solution, an online solution for wedding. And we also give them uh, mentoring. So he comes around, we give mentoring, and he has been able to start that business it's called IamWeddingSoon.com. Um, so right now, even as a student, he has, he has a platform that is working. He just acquired uh, a digital camera a few days ago that can help him sustain business. So we get a lot of stories like that um, of people who follow the, the platform, and then from following the platform, and using the resources we share with them, they have been able to start and then sustain the business. That's the idea. Juma Said. Said is reducing the incidence of dental disease and improving general access to standard dental care in the country. The, the health initiative based in Northern Nigeria, reaching out to underserved rural communities providing accessible and affordable dental health care to them and introducing modern oral hygiene tools to these communities. My name is Emmanuel Odufejo. I'm the director of Masterminds Africa. So Masterminds Africa solves the problem of youth unemployment in Nigeria. In 2012, I met um, two orphan teenagers who came to my house to help me clean up my house. And then, um, by communicating with them, I got to know that they, they were orphans, their parents were late and um, nobody was taking care of them. They were practically living on the streets, but um, they, they could have decided to live a life of crime and other things, but they decided to do small jobs for themselves that could, um, through which they can get money and take care of themselves. So that gave me, that got me thinking, how do you help a young person who is not educated, unskilled and also unemployed. How do you help such a person? That's what took me into the world of social enterprise. So in the last one year, we've been able to create 26 low-skilled jobs. This means that we've been able to help young people get low-skilled jobs like house cleaning, um, house helps, salespersons, and um, food vendors. And also we've been able to help young people start about 11 small-scale businesses. This um, ranges between tailoring to cleaning services to fashion, bags, shoes, clothes. I'm very grateful to Leap Africa for the SIP program. It was very inspiring and um, I think what I really enjoyed about it was not so much about the Leap Africa and the great um, speakers that came to talk to us. It was more about the inspiring stories of fellow change makers around me, 20 of us who were doing amazing things. I mean, I was more inspired to know that I wasn't alone. There were other great Nigerians who were doing wonderful things. So I think um, 
The greatest thing that I think I took out of the Leap Africa program is that running an NGO, you shouldn't think about running it as a non-profit. You should think in terms of running it as a for-profit so that that way you can maximize resources and also uh, maximize your, should I say, your growth and also um, impact also. Yeah.